Are you actually going to eat? They've been in here for ages, Nicole. You're not going to eat that one. Surely not. Surely not. I can't film with this noise and you chewing. Can you sit here? Are you actually going to cut your hair right now? Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm with Nicole again. Um, for today's video, we're going to be doing a 10 things I wish I knew before I went to university because I watched quite a lot of these before I went to uni, but apparently didn't really actually, none of it went into my head because I still did everything wrong. So I thought this video would be good for anyone who's going to university in September or maybe year 12 who are going to university in a few years time. I'm also going to be going shopping to get everything I need for university. I'll be doing a haul of that and also I'll be vlogging me moving into university. Um, so if you wanted to watch that, make sure you push the bell notification down below so you know when I get uploaded on a new video. Um, so yeah, we will just get into it. Okay, so the first tip I have, number one, is that I wouldn't do a weekly shop because I did a weekly shop and would buy sort of like fruit and vegetables and stuff and it would just end up staying in the fridge. We had peppers there that were there from September until we moved out in June and they were mouldy and disgusting. So unless you're gonna be getting frozen foods, did you get frozen foods most of the time? We, well, it's different because we were catered for. Oh yeah, I wasn't catered for, I had to buy my own food. We did have a, um, there is a Starbucks on my campus. I'll get talking a bit more about the campus I lived on in a bit, but. Um, we had a Starbucks. Did you? In our uni. Hmm. Um, so yeah, unless you're buying frozen food, which is fine, but I would maybe sometimes just throw in like a cucumber here and then. But um, frozen food is fine. You can just sort of bulk buy them. I used to buy the little pizzas, you know, the ones that are like 50p? Yeah. I used to buy them and just put them in the freezer and would like just cook them when I came back from night frozen out. Frozen fruit and veg. Frozen fruit and veg makes smoothies. That's a good idea. I made smoothies frozen a lot. Frozen fish fingers. Frozen burgers. Do you just get everything frozen? Mm. Did you ever cook? We didn't have an oven. Okie dokie then. That. Um, tip number two is that I would learn to cook sort of the basics, like learn how to cook pasta. You're probably going to have that pretty much every single day. Um, I used to have pasta, mayo and cheese. Also learn how to cook chicken properly. We had a few instances where it was a bit of a... Or oh, do I have salmonella or not? Because I didn't cook chicken properly. Um, you can buy, uh, like, I don't actually have one, but we get one for next year, a temperature gauge thing. And you, like, stick it in the chicken if it gets to, like, I think it's, like, 37 degrees or something that is hot enough and you're able to eat it. And also toasties. I make a cracking toastie. I'm not going to lie. Tip number three is money. Um, I wouldn't waste your money on unnecessary things. When I got my loan, I went straight to Westfield Shopping Centre and spent about £300. Um, um, that wasn't necessary. It came back to bite me in the arse throughout the year because it was some months, so I was very, very broke. It depends sort of how much student loan you get. If you get like the maximum student loan, which is for in London, is about £12,500. The maximum, um, if you're not in London, is about nine and a half grand, I think. Um, but did you have issues with money when you were at uni? Um, yeah, but just because my student loan didn't even cover my accommodation. So, I, all of my student loan immediately went on accommodation and then I had to have my mum help me out, my dad help me out to cover the rest of my accommodation plus food, plus travel, plus going out, plus all the other uni stuff you do. Yeah, so basically don't spend money if you don't have it. Like, if you have food in the house, in the flat, don't get a takeaway, just make that food. Um, and then maybe the next week, have a takeaway. Like, sort of balance it out. So just make sure, if you don't have the money, don't spend it. If you can, I'd really recommend getting a job. Um, I have had a few jobs. I worked at Next when I started. I actually managed to get that about two weeks after um, I started uni, which is really lucky. I had a few money troubles when we would have like people's birthdays and I would go out, especially because clubbing is quite expensive in London. So I'd go out and probably spend like a way too much more money than I had um, and then struggle for the rest of the month. So don't do that. I have an app called Emma. It's a budgeting app and there's so many free ones on the app store. You can pay for them if you want. 
but there are so many on the app store that you can use. Okay, this uh, next bit is gonna be about choosing campuses. This is mainly about Greenwich because there are loads of different campuses, but not, Nicole will talk about hers. I don't know if you mentioned, I go to University of Greenwich and she goes to St. Mary's. I went to. Went to St. Mary's. It's very briefly. At, at Greenwich, we do have a lot of campuses and also on the website, there's um, tours for each of the campus. So I will link them down below if you wanted to go and have a look. So we've got different campuses. We've got Cutty Sark, Daniel Defoe, Devonport House, Avery Hill, there's a Medway campus and a Macmillan Student Village. Yeah. Um, I don't really know anything about them <laughs> because I don't go <laughs> to them apart from the Avery Hill one, which I'll talk about. Um, the Medway campus, I don't know anything about, but um, I'll link the video down below if you wanted to have a look at it. There's also, um, I've got them on my phone. So Cutty Sark, these are single bedrooms with en suites in shared self catering flats um in daniel defoe you've got en suite rooms mix of flat share studios and two bedroom studio style flats devonport house is en suite rooms for postgraduates and people aged 25 plus and i don't know what macmillan student village is but i will find it i'll link it down below um i go to avery hill which i said before um i like it being at avery because it's not right in the center of greenwich um there is a free bus every half hour um, throughout the week it's not on run, doesn't run on weekends but monday to friday every half hour there's a bus it starts at like 10 past seven in the morning i think um and it goes straight from the campus to greenwich it doesn't stop in between it just goes straight there um we've got a starbucks on campus we've got a dome which basically inside has like pool tables etc like, um, a student union kind of student union like a that the student union for that campus also on Avery Hill, there's um, that's where all the medical students go, like all the sciences, um, and paramedic people. It's right next to a big park. It's really nice. So, in my A levels, I didn't get what I was expected to get, like expecting to get. Um, so I basically got into St Mary's through clearing. And St Mary's is a really tiny university. A sports university, isn't it? It's mainly sporty, yeah. Um, and because it's so tiny, they only have accommodation on campus, which is really tiny anyway, and it doesn't doesn't house all of the students. A lot of the students are do just live locally and just travel in, commute in. So I got in through clearing, and they didn't have any accommodation when I first applied, so I was on a waiting list, which was very frustrating. They didn't give me any updates. I called up daily asking for updates and they didn't give me anything. So the whole process was just an absolute nightmare. I missed out on freshers. Um, so she came to my freshers. Yeah, which was great. And yeah. So when I did eventually get accommodation, I lived with my nan, whilst I didn't have accommodation because she lives in London, so I could just get the train to university. Um, but when I did get accommodation, I moved in and everyone's very friendly, but the accommodation was not... Was it quite old fashioned like mine? It was old fashioned, but like we didn't have an oven, we didn't have a hob. Like, we were catered for, all the St Mary's accommodation is catered for. And the food wasn't great either, so you didn't really want to eat the food they gave you, but then you couldn't really make the food yourself. <laughs> so you know we basically just got takeaways every night. Which, as I said earlier, I wouldn't do because Isn't you were... cost effective. Yeah. They've also just put a library on campus, actually, I should say that. Um, they've just built a new library, so there was a, um, there was a library about a five minute walk away from my campus. Um, but they've stopped using it as a library now and they've moved it onto the Avery Hill campus so that's actually something good um, that will be there next year. We had 24 hour security as well so at the front of the whole thing were security guards who were there 24 hours so they would patrol the area um, at night. Number four is that university is not easy. I accepted my offer on the day I got my A-level results because I got better than I thought I was gonna get and I didn't want to waste my A-levels. Not that if you don't, if you get good grades and you don't go to university that you're wasting it. 
I just thought, in my opinion, that I would wanted to do something with the grades that I got. Lectures are hard. Lectures um, are hard to get up for. Yeah, not gonna lie, 9 a.m. are a killer. Um, all of that leads you on to my next point, is just enjoy yourself. Sometimes it's gonna be hard, like you're gonna be hungover, you're gonna not wanna wake up, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna feel sick, you're gonna miss home, like that will happen, but that's totally normal. And it is okay not to be okay sometimes, which I have learned quite a lot at university, because I had a few mental breakdowns. If I, try not to compare your experiences to everyone else that you see on social media. If you see people on social media being like, oh my God, yeah, I'm like always happy, like they're not, they're lying. If your experience doesn't look like it's the same as theirs and really don't worry about it, you make sure that you're happy, making the most out of your own experience, like everything's different for everyone else. And even if you do feel sad, all universities have people you can talk to if you want to talk to them. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll make so things. many friends. Like, you still talk to your parents, keep in contact with friends from home, which is what we've done. That leads me on to my next point about making friends, actually. So, my next point is um, about making friends. Basically, just try and put yourself out there. I know it can be really hard. Like, I know from experience, like, anxiety and things like that can make things like that really hard but you're going into a completely new setting and sometimes that can be so much easier when with pe people you don't know you can just completely like be yourself yeah be yourself like you don't have to you haven't grown up with people and had to like change with people do you know what i mean yeah and it's completely different from like school because at school yeah, you have so in different. one friendship group whereas at uni you'll have the friends on your course the friends in your accommodation the friends in your like clubs if you do a sport or something like that like you have so many different friendship groups. Um, it's important to try and make friends with the people in your flat. Um, so you've probably seen this in a load of other people's videos, but when you move in, like bring a door stop to keep your door open. Door slide. Yeah, Nicole's gonna get her example of a door stop. Henry. Is that Henry the hair? Oh, this is Nicole's door stop. Door stop. <laughs> so um yeah i had one i just put it open left my door open so i get a good one because university doors are fire doors and they're very very heavy um but yeah keeping the door open is so good moving in you don't have to keep opening and closing doors again um and also when you're sort of the first day when you've set your room up your parents have gone you're going to want to meet the people in your flat I had the most awkward encounter with Susanna. If Susanna, you're watching, you know what this encounter was. When we first met, she'd follow me on Instagram and I didn't follow her back. And she came up to me, she went, Megan! And it was like the most awkward hug ever. And she hugged me and I, I walked into the kitchen with mum and she walked into her room and I went to mum. I was like, that was really awkward. <laughs> So that was a really awkward experience, but now we're really good friends, so. But just make sure, another way of making friends is in the evening of freshers, um, I sort of invite people into your room to like have drinks and get, get ready, ready and things like that. One. I think I said that in a video before, but. It's important to make friends who are on your course because most universities you'll be put into group projects and stuff. You're gonna meet loads of people from different backgrounds. I think it's important to make an effort to sort of learn about that. Um, from our town, it's actually relatively quite small, isn't it? So it's not like, I didn't really know a lot about different backgrounds, different religions when I was at school. Like obviously we got taught it, but it's nice to meet people um, and hear their experiences and talk about their religion because it's actually really interesting especially at the bigger universities because there's going to be loads of international students um and they'll be interested in you and you'll be interested in them and it will be great um when you go out which is going to be a big part of a lot of people's university experiences it's important when you go out to stay safe go out with people you know you're going to go out with don't get absolutely written off. You can't get home. You end up on your own. There are things you can get. What did you say about your... At my freshers' fair at St Mary's, um, they were giving out, like, these little... Like, things that you put in, like, bottles. They, like, stopped your drinks from getting... So that things like that are important. Just make sure that you're like either keep get, get it some, on, keep your drink yeah, on you. Either get something like that, or just hold your hand over the top, and um, you should be grand. Organization, that's very important. 
um, when I started uni and I started my lectures, I'd have my laptop and I would just save things onto my desktop or just randomly and then I would lose it and be like, lol, where did it go? So I would make files, you know, you can like make files and like for each different module of your um, course and just save it maybe inside the module, do each teacher or each lecturer. That's what I ended up doing towards the end of the year because everything just got so confusing that um, I just had to in the end because I just lost everything. Um, they sometimes give you handouts, they sometimes get handouts. Make sure you have a file and that's the same for people who like don't have laptops. But if you don't have a laptop, I would get a laptop. I'm not gonna lie, it makes things a lot easier. Um, if you don't have a laptop, get like those clip files that you probably had at A level or in college or whatever. Um, you can get them from Poundland or like Wilco for really cheap. So I just make sure organisation is key to success. My next tip is that I know it can be really scary to move away from home. Luckily, we were only like an hour top max. I was about half an hour, she's about an hour away. So it didn't really matter, we both drive. But, um, we both found that buying all the stuff for your room and knowing that you're buying it all to make it look how you wanna look can actually make it more exciting. Because when you go and you like move in, you make your bed, you put everything up, I got a rug, um, it can make it a little bit more exciting. And also it can, it made me feel a bit more independent knowing that I was gonna have my own room, I was gonna, make it the way I wanted. Most university accommodations have like pin boards or something like that. You can like put your photos up, just print loads and loads of pictures of your family, your friends, your pets, everything. Eat. Like your friends' pets. Um, <laughs> this, I'm going to frame this one. <laughs> so yeah, just try and make your room as, as homely. homely. Yeah, as homely as possible to Drink. um um, as homely as possible, just to try and make the transition easier. My last tip is about societies. Did you join any societies? Yeah, I joined netball. And because I was at a really sporty university, they had like eight netball teams. So if you were doing it for sporty reasons, or if you were doing it for fun, making friends, like they had it all. There are literally endless lists of societies. Like I couldn't even, you've got sports, so you've got netball, badminton. <laughs> <laughs> hockey, basketball, football, and Tennis. then you've got yeah, then you've got and then you've got things like the LGBTQ plus societies, um, cultural society, religious societies, so like there's so many and there's such good ways of making friends. Um but also if Chess you're club. or the sporty ones, if you just think that you're just sat eating, doing nothing, going to lectures, coming back, they're actually a really good way of keeping fit. And don't be put off if you haven't played the sport before because yeah. so many people are in the same boat as you and you'll meet so many people who haven't played the sport before. And you'll before. get taught you'll it. learn together and it'll be fun. And, and then you go on society nights out. They're usually the, yeah, they're usually the best night, nights out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any other video ideas that you want me to do, then please leave it down below. I'm going to leave Nicole's... Um, Instagram in the description below. You can also follow mine and my TikTok, it's in my intro. Make sure you subscribe and also turn the no bell notifications on so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you next time. Bye.